Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Irving, and coming at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be going ahead and putting together a tabletop, or tabletop scenics, but a, a TT Combat 25mm building. It's part of their World War series. It's a 25mm Village Mason Amelie. Uh, from what I understand, a Village Mason uh, is in a French rural village, he's basically just one of the wealthy individuals. He's one of the more important people. Now, uh, this last word, I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to represent, but I just like the look of the building. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to look at all the parts, and then we're going to put it together. All right, so we've got these three pieces of MDF and then one piece of cardstock. This is basically, the cardstock is basically the shutters for all the windows. Um, all right, now this MDF is laser cut and you can see that it is very thick. It's a thick MDF. I would consider this to be about twice as thick as some other MDF models. Uh, if you've Watch my other videos. You've seen me, uh, how I pop the pieces out is not by popping the piece out of the sprue, but breaking the sprue off from around the piece. It's just an easier way, faster, speedier way, less chance for this to be damaged. by breaking the pieces off from around it. Okay, this one thing I do like about the TT Combat boards, each one is numbered. Like this is three of four, one of four, two of four, four of four. So you know which one is, you know, that you have all the pieces. Use an exacto knife to break this out. I've noticed that it doesn't, these interior pieces, they don't break off as easy as you would hope. And I didn't want to damage the frame of the window. Now, one thing that these are lousy with is burrs. Every time you break a piece of your sprue off of your model, you will have to take an exacto knife and trim it. But luckily it cuts fairly easy. And as long as you got a sharp exacto knife. Because you could actually dig into the wood if you wanted. I don't. I just want to get rid of those burrs. Okay, and then there's a few burrs inside the windows. Okay, let me pop all these pieces out and then get rid of all the burrs, and then I'll be right back. Okay, now before I do this, I want to give you a full review of what's happening here. When I was attempting to break this piece off of this wall side, the laser cutting they put through here wood grain, but they cut that wood grain too deep. It goes all the way through. You can see right here that that laser had cut all the way through. It's not just a score, it's actually cut all the way through. So when I go to peel this off, the wood wants to come off, come apart as well. So this might be an anomaly, like only on my building, or it might be on all the buildings. So when you get ready to pop the wood off, uh, break it out of its sprue, Make sure you get your exacto knife and you cut so that you don't break the wood uh, trim, you know, so you don't break the model. Okay, let's just see if we can't get this out without destroying the wood grain. Once I put some glue on that, it should fix it. This 
See, when I'm breaking this off, it wants to break off that one brick as well. I think when they made this building, the laser was just set a little bit too high and it had all the little designs cut through too far. Just a thought. Okay, I'm going to notice uh, not only the wood grain has a potential of breaking off, but these bricks do as well. Uh, you notice how these bricks came apart. Um, and I think that's also partially a symptom of the type of wood that's being used on this uh, building. Uh, this MDF is a lower quality MDF. Yeah, I can actually see through the model here. I can see my hand behind that wood. Yeah. Laser's cut. Too hot. Okay, everything is cut out. Everything is trimmed. Now we're going to go to assembly. First thing I want to do is take the roof assembly that we have here, and we're going to put this I'm going to put this together. Now it looks like the uh, crenellations go together on the top, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to put these triangular pieces in their holes here and there to give the roof a little bit of stability. Okay, so let's go ahead and use my tacky glue. I'm going to glue first things first. A little little triangles, okay? And then I'm going to try to put some glue down inside of each of these. Looks like I could just feel it like this. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing on the side. We're going to do And then on the inside. those two pieces of the roof together. There is a long and a short one. Okay. Yep. Okay, there is a long and a short one, so you got to get them in the right side. Together. Now that's not a 90 degree angle, so these top don't lay perfectly flat against each other. They actually, instead of laying like that, they're laying kind of like this. So you just have to be conscious of that.
that set off to the side. We're gonna let that dry. Before we start assembling all the walls together, I wanna to make sure that I put all the, make sure I put all the shutters down. And what we do with that, put a little glue, spread it around with your finger, because it doesn't have to be very thick. And we lay it right down next to the window, giving a little bit of the window to shine, not flush exactly with the with the side of the window. Okay. All right, now while all the shutters are drying, we're gonna put some window sills or some little uh, window flower pots or whatever you want to call them. So you take these boards that have like the little curved edges on the ends and we're going to glue them under these window sills, on these window sills, directly to the window sill. So all, all you do is just apply some glue on the part that's going to be pressed against the window sill. And of course it should be under the shutters and kind of put it as even as possible. Okay. I'm going to do this on all four because it comes with four windowsills, flower boxes or whatever you now, want to call on it. top of these you have four outer shells. These outer shells will glue directly on those and you'll probably you'll line these up the best you can on the bottom and what will happen is it'll stick out quite far but then there'll be like this little pocket there where it looks like a plant might go. And who knows, I might put a little flower in a couple of them or some dirt. A flock or something. Okay, then just line up the bottom as best you can. Apply some pressure. There you go. All right, so the windowsill flower pots, flowers are all put together. Uh, let's start working on the ground floor. Uh, this looks like it's the second floor, and it also looks like you have a spot here that you could pop out and make like um, a staircase entrance or what have you right there. But because I'm going to be using bolt action, there's no real need for a staircase. Plus, they don't provide you with a staircase. I would have to scratch build one anyway. I'm not going to pop that out. That way I can just stack, stack figures on that. Okay, so that's going to be the second floor. Ground floor, right there. Okay, and the side walls. This side wall has no windows. Right, I assume this other side wall has the one window. Yeah, looks like it'll fit right there. We might do that one first. Uh, that's going to be upstairs. Uh, this will probably be the back. And this will be the front. Okay. That looks like that's how that goes. Let's go ahead and glue this one on first. everything in. Now if you don't want it to stick to your table, use some wax paper. 
I use a very small amount, only about that much. And that's going to keep any glue that might be underneath here seeping or leaking from sticking to the floor. Okay. Or your table or what have you. Okay. Put glue there. Put glue on the inside here. Inside that little tab there. course the corner is going to fit flush up against the corner and against the floor cleaning off any excess okay so far so good now we're going with this side Go ahead and put a little glue here. There we go. So good. Now on the front, we're going to do the same thing along the bottom edge. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue along the teeth. all the brickwork line up squeeze get rid of any excess glue that might be dripping or lingering basically I just run my finger along it fingernail if I have to get in deep okay we're just gonna let that sit for a minute now this would be a good time to apply a rubber band to that so we put a nice big rubber band Pull all four walls in nice and tight so that it'll dry nice and tight like that. All right, let's start working on the second floor. That floor is not finished, but I want to start working on this before I start finishing that. Okay, so we have the front is going to be a short wall where the back is going to be tall wall okay so that's going to be tall back there this is going to be short up front here and then the tall portion and then the short portion so the tall portion will be going to the tall wall and the short portion will be going to the short wall so it's going to look just like that. All right, so we're going to put the side wall on first. Put just a little bit of glue up the ridge. Maybe along the side there because it looks like it's going to stick right there. Okay. 
Okay. Same thing on the back side. Up. I guess I could have put the glue here. Okay, just trying to get this little corner to fit. There it is. Some bricks are popping off. Okay. Don't like the way they cut the bricks. Made them super fragile on the edges. Okay, this is all put together as well clean up the inside glue from making it look like it's not dripping. So this is the next floor up. You can see how that's kind of uh, off center there. I'm going to put another rubber band on this. Trying to get a little bit lower. There we go. Over the windows. Centered it on the main body and not putting it up top where this piece might break. Set that off to the side and let it dry on the wax paper. All right, now while the main bodies are drawing, we're gonna get back to the roof piece. Uh, main thing I wanna work on now is the gable. Uh, the gable should be this piece, these two pieces, and those two pieces there we go let's take a look here the gable should have I can put that on this side okay and then I can put this on this side perfect let me go ahead and glue those in
Okay. Let's see about pulling this side in. So far, so good. Now this is going to glue on top of each other like that. And we'll get that started. So now when I put them in together, the glue will capture them both. Perfect. Okay. And that's going to sit on top of that like that. Okay, because you had to push it in and then push it forward until this front piece presses up against the, the wood and then the back should lay flat against the roof. And then this is going to lay on here and then of course I shall do is put a little glue at the very tippy edge of that up this whole thing and then on the tippy edge of this I know that's a technical term the tippy edge <laughs> because only the tip only the edge touches the wall. It's actually kind of a gap like that. And then we let the gable dry like that. And we go back down to the first level. Okay, I'm going to take this rubber band off. Okay, so the picture shows this doorway here, which is actually a separate piece, glues right in the center right there. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could open the door a little bit. What I'm going to do is mm, have the door go inward. Yeah, I'm just going to take the door completely off. We're not going to have a door, it's just going to be a doorway. Might save that door for something in the future. I'm just going to pop that door off. I'm going to put this little edging on the inside because it'll be like an inside edge of the door. I do want it to be kind of centered and not cattywampus. Okay. 
There we go. Got the door frame in there. No door. Now my understanding is this piece right here just glues right on in there. ground so that it gets flat but also doesn't stick to anything okay that's good okay so while that door is gluing in place we're going to go ahead and hit the bottom of this can leave the rubber bands that's fine so you have a bunch of these little cog pieces or whatever these are uh, now what I'm going to do is you see there's a male piece and a female piece. We're going to put those together, but not until we apply a little glue here where where these can be glued underneath interlocking. Okay. Don't need a whole lot of glue there. I consider that way too much glue. Push that flat. Now what this is going to do is when it's sitting on top of this it won't be able to move around. It'll basically keep it honest. All right, so you get all four corners done like that so that when you have your that won't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to put a little glue along the bottom edge of the of this door and along the back wall there, the floor. Put this in stone first. I'm going to put this in stone first. Oh, well, I guess I could put a little glue on the bottom of that. Okay. Because that's going to be flush. And then we can push that door out just a little bit. There we go. We need to lay that flat. Okay, let the front and the back doors the little footsteps dry where they belong. Okay. Everything is assembled. We're going to let this dry for uh, a 
a few minutes and then I'll be right back. All right guys, I think it's dry enough. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. Okay, now there's something I want to show you. Uh, another thing I don't like about this model, it's fragile, right? My review is going to tell you that its pieces are fragile. The wood wants to break apart. A lot of the brickwork is cut all the way through. You can see laser cuts all the way through. Uh, that's horrible. This is going to make this extremely fragile. Uh, I think that the window sills for some of the windows and not all the windows is kind of um, a lazy was lazy on their part to put that together like that and there's there's first of all didn't need this type of windowsill a two-piece windowsill with no you know flower box it's not really necessary in my opinion um, I think that was just I don't know extra there's also a piece i didn't bother putting on you can see it here it was a a drain pipe i'm not using that because it's a square piece of wood and it's not even straight it's just it's all crooked and stuff i i decided not to put that on but here's the piece that i wanted to show you you can see the sawdust right here for this roof you see it's got a short side and a long side right Okay, well the long side fits on no problem at all. That's that's absolutely no problem. But the short side would not lay flat here. It would it was sticking up like this. And the reason why this back board was up and straight, so it stuck out. Uh, so I took my X-Acto knife and I just cut along here. And that's not perfectly even either, but that's I cut as much as I could, I like whittled it away until I, I probably could have used a Dremel or something like that, but I tried to make it online with this wall. And now when you put your roof on, it'll actually lay, it'll lay flat. But it wouldn't do that until after I trimmed it. Okay, this fits. Right on inside there. Whoa, that's stuck to the box paper. Okay. Uh, that fits right on in there. No movement. That's good. You can you can do it this way, or you can do it this way. This is the way it's shown on the picture. And your roof on top. And that is Mason Emily. All right, guys, thanks for coming out and checking out this uh, assembly. And my, I'm pretty critical TT Combat. Um, let's just let's just say this: you get what you pay for. So if you want to save some money, get a bunch of buildings that look okay on the battlefield. They do look okay, but putting them together is a challenge. And then uh, you're going to have some damaged pieces. Like you can see this piece of the roof, that peeled off. Bricks have peeled off. Um, if you're okay with that and you just want to save a buck, get some TT Combat. They go together pretty quickly. Um, I, we just did this one in about an hour, actually. Uh, they take paint pretty well, and uh, and you can save a dollar. But uh, if you want good quality, TT Combat isn't the way I would go. Uh, I, I'd, I'd pursue maybe another MDF or plastic company. All right, guys. I'll catch you next time.